everybody. My name is Christian Wolpert. I'm the treasurer of the European Heart Rhythm Association. And today I'm interviewing Dr. Fernando Rivas from Madrid, who is the White Book coordinator for the White Book project and what he can tell us about this very important part of our work within the European Heart Rhythm Association. Fernando, what was the beginning of the White Book? Why did you want to do the White Book project? Or why did ERA put so much focus on it? Thank you very much. Uh, well, in fact, you should answer that question because the, the ERA White Book uh, began, let's say, five years ago. And it was you, really, who launched that, that project, this so important project. So and uh, this is what I first want to say. This is an important project because as far as the time has been going on, we have been aware how important are those data, probably to prepare our next actions regarding arrhythmia healthcare in Europe. Why, what is, why, why was it deemed so important in the years 2007? Was it maybe because we had new guidelines for many different therapy modalities, but we knew that not everybody would be able to implement them and you were one of the first to talk about accreditation and guideline impl implementation in 2007. Was that one reason why to go for, a, let's say, a status quo of arrhythmia therapy, determination of what is really going on across the ESC? That, that, that is the real reason. At those, let's say, early times, we were launching some very interesting projects regarding accreditation, and regarding some other areas in the newborn era Heart Rhythm Association. And one of the things we, we first were aware that when we put together all people from different countries, there were outstanding differences and, and outstanding needs. So in order to get implementation of the guidelines and let's say uh, reduce the inequality across borders, one of the things that we needed desperately at that time were data how things were going on in every country. And this is the main reason to start with this uh, first analysis on the state of school, how things were going on regarding arrhythmia healthcare. Could you draft us a little bit a picture of what, what was the real discrepancy, some, some numbers for pacing or for example ICDs at that time in 2007 comparing these countries. What was the range of difference, of disparity? Well, the range, uh, we were we were analyzing, let's say, two groups of countries. One, let's say, the small group of European uh, countries, European Union countries, and another bigger, let's say, double group of the ESC associated countries, because ESC is broader than the European Union. But having said that, if we compare data regarding uh, uh, the main therapies that we are involved, let's say implantable pulse generators, antibradycardia devices, anti-tachycardia and defibrillator devices, and also ablation, and more recently, resynchronization to treat heart failure, we can see really amazing differences from countries that can uh, duplicate, triplicate, or going over that, uh, uh, making differences, let's say, uh, unbelievable. Uh, and, and this is one of the, of the main facts that we were aware at that time. You are aware that if you start a project like this, everybody will say this is a, a Sisyphus work because you will never get the data from everybody. It's so many countries, it's hard to get into contact with them. Was there great willingness or were the people voluntary to participate, the different national societies and uh, working groups? This is one of the, of the original parts of this exciting project, is that every country, every national working group every national society was voluntarily uh, willing to offer the data as available to put together and then be analyzed. And this is the first part of the, of the methodology we have been using. And as a second part, we have been trying to compare and validate data, and this has been done very recently. This validation of data, when comparing and plotting that data uh, with those coming from European Union data, uh, uh, let's say, World Health Organization and so on. So you would say that the, the, uh, the quality of the data now is absolutely appropriate to use it for the purposes that we use it for, uh, which means in order to improve training, to improve accreditation acceptance in other countries and maybe to help the other countries and working groups 
to lobby with their own national institution to get better funding or reimbursement for their therapy? Is it sufficient now, in your opinion? Well, I have to say that quality of data can be improved. There is a lot of room for improvement, but we have the data we can have. And data are very different from countries to countries. There, are, there is a lack of data, let's say, in the more southern and eastern countries, let's say, uh, North African or, uh, or, or eastern countries in the Mediterranean area. But some other countries have very, very good quality data. But at the very end, the data we have is the data we can have. And this is, this is enough to be, to be taken in account and probably to face the problem. Because uh, as we have together data coming from five years, we can create a trend and in this way, data can be comparable. And in this way also, we can use this data, let's say, to face the problem and devise actions to solve these problems. Fernando, tell us about two very important steps, I think. After the first five years of collecting data, and with, I think, very great success, we have two things. The presentation to the European Union, to the uh, Health Commission, and the publication of the first white book supplement, which is a 75-page work uh, with comparative statistics that we gather from the white book. Would you like to tell us a little bit about these two things? Well, the, the, these points are very, very important, I have to say, and I agree with you. Presentation to the, to the, to, to the health organization in the European Union and acceptance of our data to be published in their website is very important because in some way the data we have are good enough to be shown, and let's say to be shared with any any partner or any any stakeholder related to this to this problem of healthcare. So this is very very important. I have to say that, and we we feel very happy with that. But even more important from the scientific point of view, I have to say that has been put together these five years of the Era White Book and create this Era White Book EP supplement. This is very important. Let me say because we have the evolution during five years and this allowed us to prepare trends how things are going on and second we have been able to compare countries uh, from a different area all in europe and putting together all these things how big are differences and how things are being going on during these five years i, I guess we we have in the position to say that we are obliged to improve in two different areas. Let's say one is in the area of improve the network of resources that is to be done. And this is one of the reasons because this book can be very important to be used as a tool to improve the future in every country. And, and the second part of this is that we are also aware that we need guidelines implementation to the very, very first level in every country. So patients are, let's say, sent to the people who is able to deliver this therapy. So these two, two points, I agree with you, are really significant. Is it, a, you, you know that you were running the accreditation committee for a long time, and do you think it's a, it's a good tool, the book, to see where we really have to engage in terms of helping people in proctorship or with education, on site or even at the European Heart House, does the book help us to some extent to Absolutely. find where we have to go? Absolutely. This book will be, will be, will be, sorry, will be of a great help to, to act in different, in different ways. Let's say that as a, general, as a general trend, there is a significant gradient in access to therapies from west to east and in some way from north to south. So in this let's say eastern countries and this puts together the, the era commitment with the society uh, puts together also with other initiatives uh, uh, initiatives as the eastern countries initiatives and in this way we can detect where accreditation is to be implemented is where the results or having more trained people will be higher and also the areas where implementation of guidelines will also result in increasing number of people receiving their, their, their therapies. We talked about improvement. I mean, we, we are very happy with the status quo now. Where do you think we could improve? Do you think it makes sense to apply, for example, for external funding for this kind of book? For example, at the European community? 
Oh, this is this is a difficult question. So because the, 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 this supplement can be used in the way it's possible, and for sure we need funding. And in the in the special moment we have in in Europe, in in one country is in a different way as compared to others. Any source of funding is welcome, and these numbers can be used to deal with external funding companies, with the governments, with the healthcare providers, with everyone who is involved in this situation. Are you confident that we will have a continuous book now over the next years? Do you think that the cooperation will be sufficient? I am confident that we will succeed in, in producing new editions because we really need it. This is the first step. I am, I am confident in that the next year we have a much more improved edition because visibility is one of the stimulus to make people work harder and people to get stimulus also to produce high quality data and also to produce and deliver more quality of work. So I am convinced this is the way it's gonna, it's gonna happen. Now at the end I would like to ask you, I think we should extend our gratitude to all these people from the Hartall staff that have helped us all the, these days because it has been, especially for you in the last month, a great tough job. Yeah. And I think at this point we should say that we are thankful to all staff members from the European Heart House who helped us to collect the data and to all that very critical communication on time with the different country chairman and everybody else, not to forget at this point. Absolutely, absolutely, because this EP supplement, it's, it's in some way magic because it's been so difficult to believe that so many people, all the presidents, chairmen and co-chairmen at every country, international societies and working groups, all the people of the staff at the White, at, of the Hard House, and all the people involved in producing this, uh, it's like magic. So this is the reason that I, I, I'm really happy of talking about this issue. Thank you very much, Fernando, for today, and good luck with the project. Thank you, Christian. I, I expect that you are together with us yes. producing. producing. Sure. Thank you.